I am delighted to introduce Gael. Welcome to GA, Gael. Yeah, thanks, Lisa. It is fantastic to actually see you in the flesh. I'm thrilled yes, that you're three-dimensional. <laughs> I am, I am, and I have been for a long time. Um, so there is a lot going on right now, um, and I think that that's an expression that can that applies both to the outside world. We are still not fully out of the pandemic. Um, there is a really tense geopolitical environment that we're living through. And then inside of our organization, we have a lot going on as well. An ambitious agenda, a transformation journey. Talk to me a little bit about, in the spirit of International Women's Day and, and Women's Month, talk to me a little bit about how you think this moment and leading in this moment, how that maybe is impacting women differently or how women are sort of responding to being in this, in this moment of leading in change and crisis. Women, I think, have had a key role in changing the way we work, um, the way people have dealt with this crisis. I think that that empathy and that need to, you know, look out for each other. I think that, you know, women played, I think, a key role in that. Um, and the other thing that strikes me is the fact that women are really thinking also now about what they want in their jobs. Women were kind of, you know, I think in the position where it was just, you know, take it or leave it. And now it's more, what am I crafting for myself? What do I want um, out of my personal life? What do I want out of my professional life? And how does that tie differently together, I think, than in the past? We're all deciding. Um, really what we want and then making choices and sometimes changes to design the life that we want, which I think kind of raises another question that, that I'd love to kind of hear your thoughts on, which is, you know, there are, there's research that returning to work that women and people of color are um, decidedly less enthusiastic about that than, um, than white men. Why do you think that might be? What do you suspect is happening there? I think that, you know, if, if you were like the, the, the dominating um, culture in, in a company where you didn't really have to adapt, it was your culture. And, and I think, you know, um, even for women, we had to adapt. And it was not our playground. It was kind of, you know, historically, it was more a male playground. And I think um, it's easier to come back to something that you know fits well with you than to something that probably you have always had to adapt to and it was never actually your own place. I wanna also kind of lean into something that you said earlier, which is um, the sort of EQ that, um, that, that, that women leaders often are bringing into moments like this. I think that the 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 other side of that coin, though, is I think that I we can sometimes expose ourselves to burnout. Right? There's plenty of sort of evidence and research that suggests that um, as women leaders are being called on to sort of step up in organizations, as we're you know literally leading organizations through incredible external volatility on every level. Um, that as we're doing that, it's sometimes at the expense of our own sort of care and well-being and that, you know, burnout can often be, I mean, I think burnout is an epidemic in, in many, many workplaces, but the, it, there, there is some evidence to suggest that women actually index higher on burnout because they're not only doing the actual labor, they're caring more of the emotional labor of the workforce. Um, does, is that a pattern that you've seen? And, um, and what, 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 what do you think women should be doing in terms of, and what do you think organizations should be mm -hmm. doing? You know, when you, when you see burnout, often it's because you don't see the purpose or you don't feel the recognition for all of what you're doing. And I think part of kind of doing it and not showing that you're doing it because it might sound, you know, a bit putting attention to yourself I think that is also part of the problem. And I think what I've seen from the past is that women and myself included, we have a tendency to kind of expect others to recognize that we're doing a super job or that we've landed a great client or whatever. 
And, and I think men have been generally more um, able or more, um, let's say, uh, they've, taken, they've taken that space to, to show their results and, and to show um, what they are doing. And I think the fact that women are probably doing it but not showing that they're doing it um, is, is, I think, part of, of the problem. And I think that's where, I mean, the organization has its responsibilities, but I think we also have our, our responsibility to set a certain level of boundaries, I think, for one. Um, and secondly, to actually get our efforts and our results recognized by the group. Um, because, again, I think it's more, more fulfilling to, to know that you're doing something really hard and it's, maybe it's taking a toll on you know, the time you're spending with your family, but it's actually for something that is recognized. So for me, it's an important thing. In, um, in non-technical fields, women are promoted at about 80% of the rate of men. In technical fields, that drops down to about 50%. And that is not due to contribution, but, um, but often to uh, both overt and seen and also unseen bias. So share a little bit about um, what are some of the, the tools or the methods that you use to try to counter gender bias in your, in your own teams? Um, and maybe you know an example from your own career where you feel like maybe you've experienced a little bit of that. I think one of the key things is that is how people are promoted and on what basis people are promoted. There's a process and you enter a process. So you get asked to enter the process, but you also can willingly enter the process for promotion. And I think um, there is a difference between the way women and men kind of enter that process in the sense that I think women are expecting to be invited to the process and men kind of push themselves forward into the process. But also I think the, the other aspect uh, that I have also lived personally is that it feels like men, um, and you know, in most organizations, men are still you know, making the promotion decisions uh, a lot of times. Um, and you, it feels like women um, are less judged on what their potential or their, the, the, the the road that they've been taking and where they will land, you know, in six months, in a year, but more on, okay, what have they achieved and where are they now? But I think it looks like organizations have a hard time projecting the trajectory. Um, and I think that's also what explains the fact that women are promoted when they have 100% of what it takes and men are promoted when they have only, you know, 75, 80% of what it takes. And I think that's normal because it's good to be in a challenge. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't say that men should, should wait till they are, they're 100%. I think um, we should see both trajectories, both dynamics rather than one static and one dynamic. <laughs>